Hi everyone, how's every, everyone doing today? We have Rose on uh, Sport Karate Live for the Toronto International's Post Show. Rose, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, it was a beautiful day um, in North Carolina. How is it up there in Canada? Um, getting cold, colder, and uh, <laughs> we're back in now, so training back home and yeah let's see how it goes and everything but the weather is pretty well okay i didn't i didn't know that i'm not staying up to date with canada and how they're progressing with the pandemic so could you tell me a little bit more so you opened back up and now you're back in quarantine things are shut down yeah so like in quebec um it's not in every provinces but like in quebec what happens like we open it back up and people just didn't listen to the rules and went outside without their mask and then didn't respect like the distanciation and stuff. Yeah. So we just had to close everything back up again for um, a month. And then we'll see if we keep going like this for two, three, maybe the whole winter. Uh, we have no idea. Every gym, every karate school are closed. Um, yeah. We are going online. So my dad's school is uh, now online with Google Meet and stuff. but. Other dojos are just closed. Gymnastics mm -hmm. are closed. All of those yeah. sports are out for I don't know how long. So, so you, you teach at your dad's school, obviously. Were you already equipped with that online teaching platform? And were your students already kind of used to it from before? Or is this completely new? Well, for me, it's not new since I've been working um, since I was 12 years old with Becca Ross on um, Skype. In the in the past and then now i'm working with my sensei robert young from miami um online with google meet so it goes pretty well i've been doing it for a long time now probably my old nasco career i can say but um my students didn't know about it yet they started with it with because of school they had to go online for school so now they're getting used to it and it's pretty nice yeah we're getting there yeah we're making adjustments Definitely. And a lot of people, I feel like on NASCAR are used to the whole um, Skype lessons, yeah. private lessons. So as teachers, it's not new to us, which is helps the students out a bit. Yeah, because we know how to teach it because people taught us how like to work with it. I don't know if it makes sense, but no, definitely <laughs> it does. We were the students and now we're the teachers, which really is great. So you yeah. won uh you won Trad Challenge at the Toronto Internationals. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more how that tournament went and what was your experience uh, for this tournament? Well, for this tournament, I was um, injured. So when I recorded my video, I wasn't like at my fullest. Um, I had a dislocated hip on my left side. Oh, wow. So we had to put it back in and then record the video. Yeah, it wasn't so great. So I, I didn't have any expectation at all. I was just like doing it because I love Mike. I love the team. So I was like, I have to do it. And mm -hmm. then I just sent out my video. And then as the day was going on, like my results got better. And yeah, I just followed with what I was supposed to be doing. So it was pretty nice. Yeah. So that's, that is one of the things that you can record your form and then you could pop your hip back in and then kind of, re did, you were able to re-record it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that is maybe one of the benefits that you didn't have to like bow out at the tournament. No, exactly, because I was absolutely, absolutely scared to just like, couldn't compete. I was like, oh, I paid for the event, like I really want to go and just, mm, then the chiropractor just popped the, the hip back in and it was like, yeah, just be careful. Don't overdo it. So like when we started recording the kata, I was like, okay, I have one chance to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's not screw it up. And it, it went well. It, it's yeah. Now. <laughs> you ended up, you ended up winning the tournament. So I would definitely say that it went well. <laughs> Thank you. And you are on team NMAC. Could you tell us a little bit more about how you got picked up um, and what it's like being on NMAC? And it's really growing into this big, amazing team that doesn't really have one specialty. You know, it's not like just the fighting team or just a traditional team. You have people who are across the spectrum. You have amazing CMX kids who are up and coming. So what's the dynamic of NMAC and how did you get onto that team? Well, I was actually going to stop NASCA um, two years ago for um, only competing in WKF, which is the traditional circuit. 
And then my lady asked me, like, would you like to be sponsorship by Team NMAC? You know, it's Canadian. We could do some tournament under our names and stuff. And I was like, well, okay, why not? And then I just kept going. I, I went to Mike's school to teach during the kids camp uh, during the summer. And then I just started back on the circuit and doing my best. Um, it's the, the team is pretty nice. You know, we always like talk on each, to each other on the, the, the group on mm -hmm. uh, Messenger. Mm -hmm. And like we say happy birthday. We take care of each other. If we see like somebody with the NMAC um, on, his, on his uniform during tournament, we just go and cheer, even though we don't remember our name because we're like a huge team. So right. sometimes the names are like, oh, I don't remember you, but I'll cheer because you're in the team. So that's, that's great. Dynamic. All you're all bonded by that team, um, yeah. which is which is really awesome. And I know as a competitor, especially maybe the younger competitors, you have those people who are like on your ring side and cheering you as you go. Yeah, definitely. So it's just nice, you know, like going to cheer for the youngest one because I remember I was young competing once, and then we were competing against each other once when we were younger and somebody had to cheer for us so it's our job now to cheer for them so. definitely we have to return the favor and so i know that you won trad challenge but when we were competing against each other your creative bow was amazing do you still do creative bow or are you focusing on traditional um i'm back on with my creative bow for uh, well, until COVID came in. And um, during summer, I had to teach online. I had classes like for school and stuff. So I got really busy. Um, and my then my hip got injured. But now I'm going to work back on to my creative bow uh, with Cédric Ferlin, which is a really nice teacher from uh, Quebec. And then I have my dad to back me up too. So I'm creating my form with my dad. And then Cédric is fixing it. And then my dad's fixing it. So it's getting better every time. I'm trying to keep the rhythm until the NASCAR goes on. Yeah. So a lot of people in karate actually have come from karate families or have parents who do martial arts um, in some shape or form. You have a dad to help you make your form. What's that like? Is it fun? Is it frustrating sometimes having a parent who knows every mistake you make? What is it like? Well, I feel like having my dad as a coach is worse than having just a coach. Because it's my dad, you know, like, Sometimes we argue, like we create my form and I'm just like, no, I don't want to do it. And then he's like, yeah, you have to. And I'm like, no. And then we come back home and we're just mad at each other. But we had, we try to like keep it, you know, normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like being able to do the difference between home and the dojo. But yeah, it is really rough on me. Like when tournaments come in and it's like, you have to give it all now and it's your time because I won't be there at the tournament to cheer you on. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But <laughs> he's rough sometimes. Like push-ups if I drop my bow and stuff like that. But I love him anyway. Just do it for my best. So it's okay. Of course. I think that's <laughs> what all of our parents want in the end. Even though yeah. they might express it a little differently. Yours are push-ups when you drop the bow. Mine is doing the form <laughs> again. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think they want to win more than us sometimes. But. Right? Sometimes. And then and then we're going to become those parents that are going to take this. It's just the progression. I think it's a good oh, yeah. And I think we will be worse. <laughs> right? After after we, we ourselves have been successful, we kind of like, I feel like we're going to expect it. But yeah, yeah I guess that's, that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. But you did say that you compete on WKF, which is, uh, I believe, one of like the premier... Uh, traditional circuits. Is that yeah, correct? that's yeah, exactly. Like it, I think it's the artist one I've been on for traditional kata. Like it's really different from Nazca um, on that side. Like mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, like the girls when I compete at the World Championship, I was the smallest one in the group. They were so strong, and like their everything was just perfect like in every little move of them mm -hmm. and I was like oh I gotta compete against them now it's not the same deal right. but even though I didn't pass around at the world championships or at the Pan Am I think it was a really nice experience just for my growth and like to get better next time so it was my second Pan Am actually but my first world and it was really like impressive like how good they are so Europeans especially they're they're cut they're, they do Shotokan and it's awesome just stiff nice stance to just move around like nothing happened so yeah so 
moving forward uh, after having after your first world championships in that circuit, what are you looking to sort of do your next time around or what do you have upcoming that you're working to right now? Um, I'm just working on every basics since, mm -hmm. um, you know, basics is like the most important stuff in any kata, right? So I just have to do my basics, my basics in bow, traditional, everything. Um, for now, I have school online. Um, it's it's hard, but uh, I get I'm getting there. Uh, I have to put more more time in school than in karate right now, but I'll do my I do my best to balance both, so I can like when the tournaments start again, I'll go back to WKF as much as I can mm -hmm. and NASCA as much as I can until because I don't want to you know with the covid situation so i'll just be careful with it but mm -hmm. as, when it, go, it goes back on i'll just follow the rhythm and go back on to compete too yeah what does that balancing act look like because uh there are a lot of people who are balancing uh sports martial arts and school so how do you do it um i actually create a schedule with everything rhythm down for my time so i can like have free time sometimes mm -hmm. but That's you know important. i have i have 26 hours of school a week okay so i have 20 hours of homework and then i'm trying to work out as like much as 15 hour a week i do my best to do everything yeah. I am but not the best at math, exhausted. but it, I'm not the best at math, but it does sound like there's not enough hours in a day right now to the numbers that you're giving me. No, no, I'm just running everywhere. Like I'm on my iPad, I do my like school classes and then I log out. I connect all already on like for teaching a class and then I log out and then I connect again for my own class, like my own training. I'm just running and running and running. But I, I try not to forget to breathe sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so interesting because um, we're in quarantine right now. And I think the picture that everybody thinks of is couch potatoes. But a lot of martial artists have been staying so active. And you're just one example of someone who's going above and beyond right now, which is amazing to see. Yeah. Like right now I'm in my living room mm -hmm. and the floor is tatami. <laughs> yeah. So I can work out there mm -hmm. because like, you know, I'm doing my own work in my, on my table at the kitchen in the mm -hmm. kitchen mm -hmm. and then i have i go i just walk to the living room and then do my my karate class and then walk back in the, in the kitchen do my own work walk back in and etc so it's getting i'm not walking so much but i don't have so much time to walk either so right so you cut out the travel time and you filled it up with more stuff to do exactly but all important stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Never, nothing boring or you know no. watching tv mm -hmm. or anything and just keep moving so I remember that we actually fought teams before. And so you used to fight. Um, do you still train fighting or not anymore? Um, I'm, I actually coach fighting. Okay. Um, I don't have much time training it. Mm -hmm. uh, I do my best, but like, I miss it. One day I'll take the time to train with it. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any, anyone at my dojo either. You know, I have my dad. Mm -hmm. But my dad doesn't always want to fight with me because <laughs> he has other stuff to do. Yeah. But if I had somebody to fight with, like at my dojo, I would like all the time. I miss it. But, you know, I, sometimes we have to do some choices and, you know, divisions are not like free either. Mm -hmm. Price are kind of high sometimes with Canadian exchange on, on the money. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had to do choices and I, cho I choose Kata. So. Mm -hmm. One day I'll go back to fighting if I have some free time. Yeah, that's definitely a reality after, I feel like when we're younger, we do seven, eight divisions and then you get older and you kind of decide, okay, where can I focus my energy and my money at? That's going to optimize. Exactly. The yeah, exactly. Cause I was doing all of them. Yeah. So, you know, if you remember, I was with you in extreme form, mm -hmm. creative form, traditional form, musical weapon, creative weapons. I think there was like one or two missing, but yeah, the price were going high. And then when, until I realized the cost of money, I was like, oh yeah, okay, maybe I can slow down a bit or something. Mm -hmm. So I choose the thing I was the best at. Yeah, so you, you mentioned that, you know, you're staying pretty cautious with COVID and with uh, Quebec, you know, closing down a little bit. Is this um, the only form of competition that you're doing online? Um, for now, yes. 
I don't feel safe traveling. Anyway, everything is closed, so I cannot travel. Like, mm -hmm. I can go to U.S., but I'm not sure I can come back. Interesting, yeah. So um, all the airports are closed. And, you know, if I have to go somewhere, like to the state, and I come back, it's like planning a trip of, like, four weeks because I have to stay 14, uh, 14 days, like, in quarantine in the state, uh -huh. compete, come back, and take like 14 days quarantine here right and then go back to my normal life so it's like so much time so so much days that i lose mm -hmm. you know i can't work i can't like i can't work but you know it's not the same thing yeah so i know that we are actually we're having in-person tournaments down here in the u.s what is the scene on canada pre-closing down were there any in-person tournaments in canada at all if nothing is like there's a number of people you can have in one room mm -hmm. and with all the precaution like and the rules that are here just trying to organize a tournament is like too hard to even do it like too much time and energy for something <laughs> that might not even happen because we don't know when we are closing back when we're opening back up when we're closing again when we're opening again so oh right very very reasonable um, and just different responses, you know, you can definitely see to the to the virus. Um, but so my last question for you is, you know, what, you know, you, you're teaching, we're at that sort of middle age that's not a vet, but not a rookie. What is your advice to upcoming, you know, um, martial artists that want to get into this, into the circuit at this weird time? At this weird time, just keep training. Like, don't stop training. Because if you stop training and you just compete, it's you're not gonna improve. You know, because once it, this everything goes back to normal, people are gonna keep training. And if you stop, you're just gonna be at the level that people are right now. Mm -hmm. You know, people keep upgrading their like all the tricks they do, the 360 with flip inside of it. I don't know anymore, but like they keep training. So if you stop you're not going to be there. You, yeah. You're going to be there, but not as good as everybody else. So don't expect to win. But if you keep training and you keep pushing, everything's going to be fine and stay positive. That's, That's what I would say. That's great. Yeah, you definitely don't want to stagnate. And I couldn't have said it any better that you than you did, Rose. Thank you so much for coming. And congratulations again on your win. And I can't wait Thank to you. see you have more wins. And hopefully, when everything goes back to normal, see compete together. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for it. Look All right. Power!